this guy is uh, incredible. He was part of one of the funniest shows on TV, Martin, starring Martin Lawrence back in the day. Uh, he's one of the producers of that show. Went on to create a lot of great programming as well. Uh, he is now part of uh, a show on Netflix called Dad Stop Embarrass Me. He is the executive producer of that along with Jamie Foxx. He's been reunited. And of course, Jamie Foxx of In Living Color fan has been reunited with David Allen Greer for this big hit. We got a clip. <laughs> That's hilarious. We want to welcome to the show Hollywood writer, producer, director. This man does it all. My guy, Bentley Kyle Evans, hanging out with us. Thanks for being a part of BNC this morning, man. Absolutely, man. Good morning to you guys, man. Uh, ben, you know how I feel about you. You're, you're a legend and icon in this business. Um, you go back a long way. Now, you reunited with Jamie on this Netflix show, which is the number one comedy on Netflix right now. What was it like to be back with Jamie? Well, it was it was uh, extremely gratifying. It's just a long story of, of how it all came in uh, into play for our reunion. But um, it was it was it was incredible. But it was like getting on a bike and riding all over again, man. We had such a good time, and uh, I got so much love for Fox, man. And you know, it's it's mutual adoration, man. So it was great, man. We got a chance to play again, and hopefully, we'll do it for more seasons. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Bentley, I mean, it's a hit. It, people love it, and people love what you create. But I want to know, is it difficult? Because when you're dealing with people like mm -hmm. Martin Lawrence, Jamie Foxx, David mm -hmm. Allen Greer, these guys are just naturally funny. And so does improv come into it? Is it a collab? Or, or do you write it and they just deliver it? Well, each, you know, each, each cast is, uh, is uniquely different. I mean, obviously, you know, working with Martin all those years ago, uh, you could, that's, that was like lightning in a bottle. Yes, it was a lot of improv yeah. that went on there. Um, but, you know, it was on the page first. And then as far as with Jamie, of course, yeah. you know, he's a prodigy. There was a lot of improv that went on there as well. So, you know, you get David and Jamie in a room together. You can't control that. You got to oh, let goodness. it breathe and be what it's right. going to be. But it was fantastic just to watch these guys play. And, you know, that's what I got in business for, just to be around my heroes. And it's a very humbling experience mm -hmm. working with uh, juggernauts like them. You're a juggernaut, and they, they, they should be proud mm -hmm. to be around you. I, you. You know how I feel about you, my man. And I just wanted to bring you on because I, I want to give you your flowers because you deserve it. You're a legend in this business. You don't get enough credit. 30 years, consistent work. Uh, not just shows you produce, direct, create, wrote. But you have your own studio where you film and you tape your own shows mm. and you give opportunities to actors and other directors to come in and do their own thing as well. So I want to give you that love right there. But how important is it for us as black people to own our own shows, to do our own things and you giving them those opportunities? It's extremely important, man. It's like um, there's not a lot of people that are doing that out there. And I realize that, you know, Ownership is very, very important because it's all about the legacy play. So I knew that, you know, working for those big companies, which was, you know, it's fantastic working for Warner Brothers and, and HBO and, all, and, you know, all those big companies that I've worked for in the past. But at the end of the day, they end up owning all of it. It's, uh, you know, we're, yeah. we're not really even prop participants. And the contract says one thing, but then when it really comes down to it, you really don't own it. You just are a residual player. So... For me, it, I felt like I always heard about, you know, people like James Brown and, and Ray Charles, different people like mm -hmm. that that owned their 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 masters to their music. Mm -hmm. And then that same thing relates to television and film. If you could own your own destiny, own your own content, that means that you can license it for years and years and years. And so you mm -hmm. become the same thing as that studio. So it didn't make sense for me to necessarily go and and, and work with Warner Brothers and they're not giving me ownership. I'd rather create my own projects and partner with the Warner Brothers or any other major company in order to get my expression out there. Yeah. So, you know, we we love your projects, but we fell in love with Martin. It's hard to believe it was almost 30 years ago. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Are, are you stunned that it still resonates with so many people? You know, Detroit Pistons just announced they're going to release Martin the merchandise mm -hmm. and a tribute to the show. Yeah. Um, I think we have some of that, but that's all that's all you and you being a part of that in the next generation as we're looking at it. So that's got to that's got to weigh on you. 
it's humbling. You know, it's, it's very humbling to see that. Um, I'm, I'm not surprised. I mean, we knew that we had something special when we were doing it. I mean, I don't think that we knew that Martin was going to be what I Love Lucy was for us when we were coming up, that yeah. classic yes. show that will play forever. But I think we knew we had something special, and we caught it at the right time, at the forefront of hip-hop, mm -hmm. and, and just, you know, really getting into that culture when it was really starting to be expressed. So it was just like it was the, being in the right place at the right time. Again, it's very humbling to see that. Um, I love the fact that we are still relevant out there. And I've been with Martin mm -hmm. in different places. And he's like, you know, people come up and recognize him. And he'll go, man, they still remember that show? I'm like, are you kidding? You know what we mm -hmm. did there? I mean, yeah. <laughs> we really did something special there for the culture. And I'm proud to be a part of that. Really, I am. Yeah, yeah because of that show, he, people come up and say, what's up? And they finally come up to you and say, you so almondy. You so almondy. <laughs> Every, everybody, everybody's asking about this reboot. Come on, give me some, give me some insight. We're going to see uh, Martin, Pam, Gina, mm -hmm. and Cole anytime soon again. You know what? To, to be quite honest with you, I don't think it's going to happen. I mean, I'm, I'm saying mm. it here live. I, I, I don't know if mm. it's going to happen. I don't think so, though. I think that, um, you know, they have a lot of respect for Tommy and seeing that Tommy can't be a part of it. It just wouldn't yeah. really be the same as it was. And, you know, everybody's doing their own projects. I mean, Sheena's on the show with Cedric and, and um, you know, Martin's doing his movies and doing all kinds of other projects that he's producing. And so I think everybody's just, in, it's kind of disjointed. And it's almost like you don't necessarily want to mess with a classic. It's like, you know, that's like right. redoing, redoing a Luther Vandross song, leave it alone. 